rather than, again, adding to that cycle, beating ourselves up and going, we should be perfect, we should get this, but mm. we're human and mm. in that humanness we continually fall over so that we can get back up. And mm. G'day guys and welcome to Finding Space. And so I give you Chandamara Kad. I feel like we're just getting started, <laughs> you know, just warming up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I was saying to my friends and family, I was really excited to have you here today. Yeah, oh, thank um, you, brother. Yeah, partly just from my, my learning myself, you know, um, but to be able to share that kind of conversation with others is, I think, really, it's something I'm really kind of inspired about at the moment, just like the garden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, as I, I, you know, to share with you open and vulnerably come here, I had a fox come and eat all my chickens yesterday, killed 13 of them, you know, and that fox has visited and it killed another 13. So it seems to be 13 once before, about two years ago. Right. And I did kill that fox yesterday, you know. Yeah. It's going to keep coming back. Mm. I live in harmony with all animals. And though I kill that fox as quickly and as humanely as possible, you know, mm. and bury it and share a prayer and mm. blessing. Yeah. I looked up what that fox means, you know, and, in some ways, cunning, deceptive, you know. Mm. I feel like it's coming to face for me a lot of personal stuff of living in this system, cunning, deceptive, mm. as I say, that trickster energy that mm. finds its way in to leave us in this what feels often an isolated place and mm. to really face that on deeper levels as you immerse more and more or, you know, relinquish that trauma and that river, one more rock, two more rocks or three more rocks or mm. a whole armful of rocks this time, you know, that mm. allow more of that flow. Mm. It's like, man, it, it still triggers some of that trauma, you know. Mm. I um, I don't take drugs or drink or anything, but I do do ceremony with certain plant medicines at times. Mm. And um, I had five journeys in 2019, big um, ayahuasca in a yurt just like this. Right. As I walked in, I was like, wow, well, here we go. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and possibly part of my, you know, mind at the beginning was part of it, it, what came up with some really mm. – you know, as with them, it doesn't do it for you. It just activates your own readiness at that time to see what you need to see. Yeah. And what I saw as part of each of them was quite what you could be perceived from one end, very traumatic, mm. but another end, bringing stuff up that is locked away in the cellular being, mm. stopping that river from flowing. One vision I was just... One of the facilitators, as it was all done in ceremony, mm. you know, came out. He's like, brother, are you okay? I just got in the trauma. Mm. And I was just, I was an Aboriginal woman, undeniable, looking at these babies and Aboriginal children being burnt on the fire, their skin bubbling and being stabbed. Fuck. You know, I mean, this, this happened all over the world, but here, you know, Murdering Creek over here. Yep. You know, the, and what we're dealing with is not black or white. It's a mentality of obviously the yin and the yang, the dance. Mm. The, it's continual happening, but we're coming back into balance and then it will go into another, you know, but mm. it's like that fox, you know, represented to me facing that deceptiveness and we're now creating a 5D reality that is bringing that deceptiveness into a brighter light that will for all of us to see like the past couple of years to go mm. far out, like many are going, wow, they did that to this mob, they did it to the, mm. they did it to the women, they did it to the, the Muslims, they've done it to, you know. Mm. 
mm. to cause division and mm. separ- blah, 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 the stories. Mm. But it's like, wow, man, I've been actually feeling that, you know, through the night and coming here this morning and, yeah. I mean, it's always, no matter what space you're in, you know, being in that and speaking authentically yeah. from that space. But I know that, um, yeah, part of talking to you right now is part of that unfolding. I can feel mm. that moving through me, you know. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm super grateful that you you made it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'm grateful for people like you, brother. And as I say, on talking on just on a human level, if it wasn't for people like you, mm. my mother's people would have been massacred completely mm. out of existence, you know. Mm. Seeing the value of these things, seeing the value of this richness, you know. Mm. I'm in tears. I can be in tears at times. You know, my niece the same way as that young girl that took her life two weeks ago, cutting up her arm to truly kill herself, you know. Mm. Just feel so isolated in this reality Mm. and living such a disjointed way. And as your beautiful little one comes in, bringing a new fresh consciousness into this reality Mm. that is part of transforming it, part of our awakening. But to see it's it's still trickles, you know, you still see trickles and it's still, you know, being patient. Mm. And knowing that it's happening, but you know, and not forcing anything because it all happens in the right timing. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm over at times, I'm to be really, I'm over living, you know, in a system where I have to pay to live on a piece of land. Mob here, gubby gubby, have to pay, all of us, but you know, mm. have to pay to exist on a land that their ancestors walk free. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, man, and their invitation when they put out their hand and they've had their children stolen, they've had their grand great-grandparents murdered, you know, massacred, they've been rounded up into missions and mm. genocided to let go of their ways to learn these new words and these wear these clothes and this way. You know, they still reach out, come, mm. come walk with us. Mm. I mean, that's where it's like, you know, I talked about brother and sister and, and that to me, that gesture is what I think about in that moment. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you get hit by your brother and you just turn the other cheek and you still put your hand out. Yeah. You know, and you still offer, you know, to have that relationship and that connection yes. regardless of what has gone on. You know, there's that forgiveness and acceptance and all that sort of stuff, you know, and just seeing each other as brothers and sisters, we're the same. Yes. You know, and we're just acting out on different things based on different traumas. We've had different experiences, whatever that might be, yes. you know, there's no wrong in seeing it in that way. It's just unity, you know, and, and you might see someone act out, you know, or go against the, the law, L-A-W, and, but you just see it as that person doing their best given their circumstances, oh, yes, you know, and not seeing it as, oh, look at that idiot over there or I can't believe you did that. You should go yeah. to jail for that or you yes. should be punished, punished, you know, which only furthers their guilt, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. You know that punishment, like, if you broke law here, L-O-R-E, which means you, you know, you, you were putting rocks in that river to block that flow of universal mm. life force energy flowing in manifested form, there was serious, you'd be speared in the leg or something like that. But it wasn't one necessarily, a, it was consequences, but it wasn't one of, I'm going to shrink your spirit and push you into submission, you yeah. know, which is worlds apart, which some could say is in the same light, but it's worlds apart. And to see young people or any people put in jail because of a behavior that is a byproduct of not adjusting to a system mm. that they just can't, mm. can't get with the program, if you like. Yeah. It's like, man, well, how barbaric, you know, and yet. Mm. We're supposedly living in the most advanced of times <laughs> and yet, you know, they look back at those other expressions of the way that we had lived for millions of years as, you know, savage and um, unprogressive, if you like. Yeah. Man, you really bring this um, this transmission with what you talk about and how you talk and share. Like 
as we were walking through before and I said, you know, this is like this is kind of our land here. As I'm saying it, I'm thinking, John and I was probably thinking, Alex, it's not your fucking land, mate. <laughs> but, you know, it's yeah. just this idea, like you say, that there's these lines and this is ours and that's theirs yes. and I'm paying for this. Yes. It's like, no, it's just it's just land, yes. you know, and we have to engage with the system in some way to be able to live in, uh, you know, where we are or where you are. Yes. Um, not so far from here, this beautiful I believe one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. I agree on that one. <laughs> <You know? yeah. laughs> like how lucky are we? Um, yes. But it's this, it still feel it's this strange thing, you know, I've got a piece of paper. Yes. And I've sacrificed a lot to be able to afford somewhere like this. Yes. Right. Plugging myself into the system to be able to do that. Yes. And I'm cool with that. You know, yes. and I'm cool with it enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Certainly don't want to be there forever. Yes. Um, just to be able to live here and for me now I, I want to share this with as many people as I can yes you know what a treat to be on land um, and to have that connection and yet it's still so strange the concept of owning earth yes you know <laughs> oh, and, and I believe from what I gauge and feel very effortlessly with yourself and many others it's worlds apart from the intention of this is mine mm. there's a sense of I am here and this is these boundaries are something I'm custodialing, I'm I'm looking after and it is a place, a safe haven where my family can grow and those that I trust to invite here to share in that vibe, yeah. it's ground zero. My property for me, my property, you know, again, these are <laughs> terms, but yeah. that I custodial, you know, I build food forest, I, you know, I... I I have a lot of things. I sit on that country and have for 12 years, 13 years of being there. It's much more than grass and trees and plants and, and animals. You know, it's, it's a space where I can go and truly surrender and immerse within, but also know that those animals there, you know, those, those trees, those things, I'm supporting their existence. I'm so looking after them. I'm seeing the urban sprawl around me, you know, mm. come and meet that place. Mm. But it's like here, this is a place that I'm part of looking after. And, yes, I don't wish to have people on that come and disrespect that mm. or take advantage of that energy. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, again, it's worlds apart from – I own this. This is me and mine and, you know, fuck off. Go away. Yeah. Go to your own. I don't care what you do. Yeah. Mm. And it's a funny thing, you know, um, the more and more in that humbleness, the more and more in that dying to the moment, you start to see that there is no one before me. You start to see with clarity, not with just your physical eyes. You start to see, I suppose, with the third eye, mm. when you're in that dreaming, when you're in that state of mm. more awakening and that there is no nine billion people. So when you say of your brother doing that and your sister doing that, it's self. And when you judge them and you put them in another box, you just – Take yourself more and more into another box, into another box, into it, and you isolate yourself from the reality rather than aligning with the truth. You are that. Mm. You are that person who killed that child, which is the worst thing, you know, on the extreme of the spectrum. You are that person who, who gives themselves self, self, selflessly. You are the spectrum all between that as well. You are everything. And when you cannot relate to that, that is a that is something that is presenting for you to look at to go, this stops you from flying, this stops you from seeing the reality. Mm -hmm. This is what causes you trauma. This is what leads you to believe that ownership is a real concept. Mm -hmm. Money is the currency and possession and control. This is what gives all of those things power because true sovereignty is understanding you are part of everything and nothing moves separately or independently of your spirit and either do you 
So when Jesus, you know, which I'm not a Christian, but I resonate, Jesus, you slapped in that face, turned the other cheek. You know, what it's representing is I see you. I see you as the same spirit that is in this form. We are inseparable, like waves on the top of the shore with just different expressions. If I damage you and I judge you and I take from you, I take from me. And it's a whole cycle of that trickster, illusion, maya, and whatever it is that keeps you continually in that, some people say, karmatic cycle or forever unfolding, believing that you are separated, believing that you are this entity and you are a victim to it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brother. Like you judge someone else, you're judging yourself. Yeah. You know. And, hey, I still have to remind myself of that lesson. (laughs) But having that ability to catch yourself in those moments. That's right. Like, whoa, okay, what's the mirror here? You know, what's the piece in in you that I'm finding, which is actually a piece in me, which I haven't fully accepted yet. And having compassion for ourselves and Mm. empathy and going, man, I, I," rather than, again, adding to that cycle, beating ourselves up and going, we should be perfect. We should get this. But mm. We're human and mm. in that humanness we continually fall over so that we can get back up. And, mm. But, yeah, that, that love in compassion, that love in true empathy that we, yeah, often reflect onto others as a reflection of what we do to ourselves. So. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Found Space, Australia and New Zealand's premium infrared sauna company. Ready to sauna? Ready to take your health to a higher level? Make your home a place of wellness with Found Space. Visit foundspace.com.au or foundspace.co.nz to learn more. Man, uh, as you know, I am becoming a dad soon and in our rite of passage last week, something that came up was humility and and just that acceptance of like, I'm going to do my absolute best. Sometimes I'll fuck it up. Yes. And that's all right. Yes. <laughs> you know, instead of this perfection seeking and, you know, it's, you're just setting yourself up in that mental prison. You you will be perfect and you are perfect. <laughs> Uh, you'll be perfect in your fucked upness too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they will reflect back to you. And you know, the the showing up every day, no no one else can speak for another, but the showing up for me every day, knowing like oh I've woken up at three or two in the morning and had panic attacks and go and obviously see that as an invitation to listen to my body about what, you know, again, what isn't flowing and going, mm. Wow. The programming I got when I grew up, children were seen and not heard and mm. they were smacked and hit, which is mm. not what I do. Mm. Translate sometimes just spills out, but it spills out for me to see and they are a beautiful reflection of it's not it's not necessarily what I do but how I react and mm. meet that where it's at at mm. times because, yeah, Man, they they will bring out the best in you, but they'll also <laughs> possibly bring out the worst in us. And mm. it's it's a love affair. And you know, gone other days. I feel of our child is this thing that we have to teach to live in the world, mm. which is part of it. But I think more and more of us are again. This child's here. The sacred reverence of lessons and life that it's trying to guide us back to living again. Mm. Is that understanding something that's always remained in traditional cultures? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the young ones were given so much responsibility. I mean, even in my era of the 70s growing up, it was a, it was a natural thing for most families. Their children went off and played in the bush till dark time on a Saturday or Sunday or even afternoons. Mm. So that's like, nine, 10, 11 hours on their own, their parents hadn't seen them. They didn't worry. 
soon as you came home, you knew starting to, you'd make your way back. Mm. Wherever I would walk five, six, seven kilometers away, if I got bitten by a snake, that's on to me to work that out. Mm. But I would go home and they'd say, hey, hey, all right, in there, wash up, dinner time, come on. Mm. You know, and even then you go on mop. Them children walk off, they go walk about. They don't feel scared. They don't feel alone. They know water's there, food there. Mm. Yep, them animals, I know them, one, that kangaroo. That my family there, that my totem. Mm. I'll never be lost with that one. Mm. You know, that knowing, yeah, that, you know, knowing that you are safe and held and that you grow with this thing of knowing everything is supporting you and you're there adding to that beautiful enrichment. Mm. Wow. You know, I see it today with a lot of, uh, and, you know, I only use this as a descriptive sense, a non-First Nation mob mm. who I consider tribe, I consider, consider family that walking in a similar direction of healing and expanding in that truth. You see them, you know, ah, oh, not injecting fear, their child's about to get near the edge. Hey, watch there. Rather than, hey, get away from there. <laughs> no, 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 you're going to fall. All right, you're not going there again. Don't do that. Yeah. It's, um, be careful in the waves. Be careful in the waves. But you'll, That's right. you, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know that, you know, that those children, as much as they're little, they have that internal, internal barometer. They know. Mm. And if you don't develop it, then they get, older and they go, wait, who's going to tell me what to do? Mm. Oh, the boss will tell me what to do. Oh, the teacher will mm. tell me. Oh, the authorities. And just because someone wears a uniform with a badge or it does not mean they know more than you. Mm. It does not mean that they have authority over your mm. freedom, your movement. What I notice is being replaced is people's freedom with safety. Safety is provided to keep you safe, but the world of safety is an illusion. And if anything, it's a prison cell. Same as the world of convenience. You have a lighter now. You no longer need to make fire. You no longer need to collect wood. But they were the very things that we bonded over. They were the very things that we connected over. Mm -hmm. We connected when we went and gathered that food. We had relationship. We talked. We, we listened. We, we, yet they, that's gone now. There's no more collecting that wood. There's mm. no more going and walking for that water. We got a tap. There's no, no, you know, going and having men's business. We're too busy. We got to get to work, man. We got to mm. make a living to pay for this bit of land and, and food that we buy from that place. Yeah. Those things feel like they say that they're advancements, you know, but I really feel that those are the very things that have robbed us of our absolute um, portholes or moments of deepening, deepening, deepening. But then, you know, as you say about growing food, that's why many of us are, when I say many of us, I'm noticing a lot more, even in mainstream, people are extending their gardens, mm. people are getting chickens, mm. people are learning more and more how to look after the ocean. Now I shared in the early part, that leader fish that's out here on the coast that Gubby Gubby talk about, you know, if you catch that fish, you're breaking not only million year cycles and it takes seven generations to undo that damage. But if you were to know that you look at the stringy bark tree and when the bark is coming off, that will tell you if you go to the coast, you see the sea eagle that will be diving for those mullet shoals happening every time. That's just what is. That tells you that that leader fish has passed. Go fishing. There you go. How simple is that relationship? And it saves you all that damage. But that one little key, that bark coming off that tree, you know, with that fish, like who? how do you know that if you don't listen? How do you know that? How do your children don't know that if they don't develop that internal barometer or relationship with those things? if they're taught that their whole premise seemingly is to be on a production line to be a worker from, from you know, 
and many families not judging them and go, you know, this is, we've got to get you to school. We're, we're getting you time, time. It became so clear to me how the information you talk about just briefly there is missing when I moved here. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden I, I kind of had to start listening more, you know, and I just ha- like have so much to, to learn, <laughs> yeah. so much more listening to do just to understand land, you know, yes. and understand how to grow food and, and, and just the process of it all. Yeah. You know, and food's just one element, you know, but for me, you know, I'm as old as I am and feeling like if that stuff, if I didn't have the convenience, the convenience which I've been brought up knowing is the way to yes. live, if I didn't have that, I'd be fucked. Yes. So it's like, well, what do I really know? Yes. <laughs> Not much, yeah. you know, and, and it takes a disaster situation to realize like, what can I really offer to a community of people? Yes. I can offer how to run a business. Yes. Not helpful if there's no food. <laughs> yes. You know, I can, I can offer how to exist in the current world, but not helpful if you don't know where water is and you haven't got any coming out of the tap. Yes. You know. Who controls the taps? Exactly. Who controls the fire? <laughs> yeah. Who controls the food? That's exactly. the, the thing that, you know, we must ask and we must, you know, again, go, it's that person and it's this, but, but it's us that have fed that very thing. And the only way that it's undone is I feel and many beautiful elders, First Nation and not, that, you know, hold a lot of that wisdom resonate that it's not in government, it's not in governing bodies, but in individuals mm-hmm. collectively coming together as community and grassroots. But please keep sharing. Sorry. No, me. no, I, I, I totally agree. It, same thing with fire. Who's, who's making the fire? Yeah. You know, <laughs> where are you getting your lighter from? That's right. Where are you getting your flint from? That's right. <laughs> and when, when, when that, what, what would happen if people were put somewhere, you know? Why is that not? taken if people are taking young men or young women out in maybe together business but women's business men's business mm. and going walk about and going how 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 do you listen what would you do how how would you move from here rather than being so stripped and stripped away and re-educated in a way that does have central bodies of of control and and um you know, information that you need to get or obtain, obtain mm. because it's not mm. it's not a natural understanding you have to obtain so that you can navigate mm. and survive. And I'm not saying the answer is going back and dropping everything and going back <laughs> to the bush. The natural right. abundance is disrupted so much. It's it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. And letting go of those prison bars that I'm part of still lifelong journey of of this comfort and security and blah, blah, is a process, as we talked about, as opposed to completely just stripping it, which we would realise we're, again, a baby in the forest. I remember watching Avatar and going, you know, the, as this, you know, man from that 3D reality is put into mm. a tribal situation and he he doesn't see it. But over time he starts to awaken and at first the... The, the woman that he falls in love with that is part of the tribal way of living. You are a baby. Mm. You are a baby that is blind, that cannot see. And you are yet to awaken to, you know, a reality that you are you are part of. Mm. But yeah, it's um it's funny how, as I say, the more you open your eyes, the more pain and trauma that you transmute in yourself lessening that collective burden that we all feel and is all underlining in our subconscious and so that we are able to feel again and feel more 
alive in our spirit and see that as much as that's all a beautiful happening, we come back home to ourselves and remember that we we tricked ourselves that we were lost once. And we're like, here we are, <laughs> again, back here, remembering that we never went. Wow, what a nice little play that was. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. yeah but I got, on a human, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I got lost, you know, you, sometimes you catch yourself, you know, oh, I got lost for a minute there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and going, that, um, that journey was, you know, a nice little journey. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, back again as I go into those spaces beyond words, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. You said earlier um, when going through and experiencing um, like those plant medicine ceremonies, a lot of trauma came up for you. Yes. Did you find those experiences helpful to process that trauma which sits in your blood and your DNA? Yes. Mm. You know, I had to feel it. And uh, I, I have no illusions, delusions that that's it, you know. There's, there's, there's we... I mean, something we still don't acknowledge and we might from a, oh, we go and got our DNA chart done or something, but we don't truly acknowledge just the ancestors are all within us, you know. Our, it's in our DNA and expression, the lineage of millions of years of unfolding is within us and every time those rocks are put there, you know, in general, it, that trauma is passed on to our children. Mm. I turned up to those journeys and... You know, after the first two, I'd turn up and even in the introduction at the beginning, I'd be tears flying down my face, just talking like this Mm. and going, I don't want to be here, but I'm here. So I know there's nowhere else to go. And my children, they picked their own journey to come in from the ether into this, but I'm here to partly lessen the burden of their journey and facing and looking at this stuff, if I don't, then they look at it. And if they don't, then their children will have to look at it. So, you know, I acknowledge I put my finger in the fire and it's burning and I acknowledge that's a reality. I feel it. I don't want to run away from it. I don't want to turn on the TV or talk to someone else or go and distract myself with life from it. Because that is calling me into the now moment, the only moment that truly exists. And that pain exists for that very reason, because I'm not listening. That now moment is calling me eternally, and I'm not listening. So I may have to lose a finger. I may burn a finger. I may have to lose a hand. I may have to lose something. I may have to feel something to bring me into that moment to listen again. And that's love wrapped in unpleasant wrapping, but it's love nevertheless, going, hey, we're here, we're still here. Don't play any more games with yourself. Come home. Remember that you are home. You've always been home. And so those journeys brought up that trauma. And from one perspective, the victim perspective, I could look at it and go, I'm not going back again. Mm -hmm. I've never felt that level of pain and anguish And I've felt some very hard pain and anguish. As a 16-year-old boy, I was locked up 16, 15, 13, you know, 14, locked up in juvenile institutions, hard places, locked in solitary confinement, you know, at times with no blanket, no bed, a bucket as toilet, and left in there for weeks. I've known trauma and torment, but this was another level. And this stuff sits within our souls And I know that that arising, I could look at it from the perspective, this is happening to me, I'm not doing that anymore. But it's arising for a reason, hey, come back to this moment. You've been in the way of distraction too much. It's taken you away. It's not healthy. Mm. You'll get disease, you'll be sick, more and more unwell. Mentally, emotionally, physically, psychically, you won't see that you are part of the greater whole, you will keep believing this untruth. So yeah, it's, um, 
It's, you know, people are taught if something bad happens in their life. Man, that's messed up. I could have this one and do this one and I could go and hurt people and, you know, I'm not judging them because I, I see they don't have the tools, they don't have the, they haven't had whatever it is that allows them to feel and go through that immensity of those things sometimes. Mm. But, um, you know, I, 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 and I speak of this as my experience as an individual, but I also feel there's a deeper truth in that well of the past few years it's felt like there's a fire burning through global society, global community, and in that burning through, it's inviting the green shoots to come through. But as that fire is burning through, we're all getting disorientated. The smoke's getting in our eyes, and we're like, "What? What is going on? This this is crazy. This is this is surreal. How how can this be happening?" But what it's doing also is calling for us to be present, to really listen back again to life and know that those green shoots, as they come through, they can only come through when that right consciousness is there to to water them, to be the fertile soil for those green shoots to grow into a forest that holds us all again. Mm -hmm. It's just seeing the big picture, isn't it? You know, it's such a beautiful metaphor and just seeing, yeah, it might seem like the fire is against us, but actually it's for yes. us. <laughs> yes. And we might get smoke in our eyes and that's all right. Yes. You know, but seeing what comes after the fire. Mm. And we are a phoenix, you know, we yeah. rise in that. And- <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, and I also loved what you said about had you not, dealt and continue to deal with those things in your life, well, it's going to be in the blood of your kids. And if they yes. don't deal with it, it's in the blood of their children and the cells of their yes. children, you know, and that's generational trauma. That's right. And that's why we deal with things that maybe happen to our parents, parents, parents. That's right. You know? Or as you said, there's that depth of thousands of generations not thousand, not looking back thousands of years, but yes. thousands of generations. Yes. Right. Let that sink in for a moment, you yes. know. And this, this trauma and these things can be passed on for a really long time. That's right. You know. You know, and it's um, it's something that you know. Look at that, as you say, in society, and we're we're taught to avoid pain. Mm. Why is that? Why are we taught to avoid anything that's uncomfortable? You know, as a, as a thing of putting it as bad. It's always put as a, a negative. They're the things that, you know, as you talked about before, when language come back into the schools or come into the schools, I should say, or mm-hmm. culture, when we eradicate those things that stop that from being a reality, it's those things that block that mm-hmm. in ourselves where we don't delve deep enough to look at that, those things in ourself. And so, you know, the law of attraction, it's a reality. We're co-creators. We're, we're, we create the very reality we live in. And in that, we, we can go into victimhood and go, well, the government's doing this. And I talked about that thing of, you know, for me on a human level, which I'm softening and softening into. Mm. There is a part of me that is a victim. It's like, why do I have to pay to live here? But again, it's parts in me mm. that are still arising and surfacing mm. to look at and face that. And we lessen the burden for the collective community. You know, they talk about, I don't know if you heard that story of the crow. So it, when cane toad was introduced here in Australia to eat mm. the cane beetle and it didn't even eat the cane beetle, and took off and infested. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> oh, man, and so uh, now we have this beautiful creature that does such damage. But yeah. the crow used to eat these ones, and it used to die. The poison sacs would kill them. Mm. But the crow, very smart one, after a while, it started seeing it on the east coast. It would turn it over and start eating the guts, and mm. worked out how to eat them without being poisoned. Mm. But as this was happening. They started seeing it on the West Coast 
they started seeing it a lot more prevalently around that weren't connected to these specific areas. Mm. And it wasn't that one flew all the way over to Western Australia. But what they started seeing is that collective consciousness, once it reaches a certain point, yep. it affects all of us as individuals. And that's how it, you know, removing one rock, two rock, it starts to flow in and affect the rest of the dam that we're all part of. So, mm. you know, that, that consciousness, just like that bird, it affects the whole and we don't realise that our own dealing with that internally then affects. So dealing with that trauma on our own level, individual level, which we 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 um, chose to come mm. into this specific as some would say, a Kashik expression of our our human journey from the stars. Yeah. Um, we're also undoing that karma, but we're also undoing the karma of the collective as well because mm-hmm. they're inseparable. But mm-hmm. yeah, man, just that, just that remembering of we're here in this dense reality to learn some shit. Yeah, you know. And maybe to listen deeply, (laughs) (laughs) maybe more deeply than our ancestors did or certainly um, many of our parents perhaps have or their parents. And to just, you know, it's a school. We're we're in the school and we're in the playground and it's a dance. Sometimes we'll step on each other's feet and that's all right, but we're all just dancing. Yes. And we're just giving it a go. Yes. We are, hey, and... um knowing that we all don't have any idea. We're just uh, (laughs) stumbling around together and when we do have an idea, life will go, yeah, really? (laughs) That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, how about you deal with this? Yeah. (laughs) See if you've got any idea after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Man. Thanks again. Thank you, my brother. Mm. You're most well and truly in the spotlight right now. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, brother, for what you're doing. Hey, mm. um, my grandmother was beaten and raped and same as, you know, many of my preceding generations from colonialism and stuff. Mm. They never had a voice. It was illegal for them to speak in language or practice song or ceremony or dance. They would be arrested, beaten, even murdered. And there was no law in the land that could prosecute anyone for doing that. You know, to have a voice and have people hear. It's one thing to share that stuff, but if it doesn't go anywhere... Mm. Obviously, it all happens with him, but if it doesn't go anywhere on a, another level, then, mm. you know, it doesn't complement or facilitate that unfolding as well. And people that have such platforms or mm. modes of influence um, that are part of sharing, you know, that utilize these voices and a broad spectrum of voices, you mm. know, mm. are... Um, Doing some powerful medicine, man. Mm. Yeah. Like we said before, I'm just doing my best. Yeah. That's <laughs> all I can ask for myself, really. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it also brings a lot of fulfillment to me too. You know, um, even just doing doing this work. I mean, this is just one part of what I do, but it brings me oftentimes the most fulfillment. And then when we put put it out there. And then I hear back from people, Alex, man, that talk you had with John DeMara was just, it changed something in me, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's all I can ask for, you know? And maybe it's one person. Sometimes it's just one person. Sometimes it's hundreds of people. Sometimes it's thousands. Yeah. You know, and, and this will be there forever, you know, for yeah. people to engage with and listen to and learn from, um, tune into. So I'm really grateful again for your time because to me, this is, this is where it's at. (laughs) Yeah. These kind of conversations, uh, particularly just get me really, 
in a good space. Yeah, I've um, it's been a journey for me to be able to, you know, and I've been doing for a while now, but to get to that place, you know, because mm. I was in a place where I wanted to burn it all down as a youngster. <laughs> yeah, I can and um, but also the shame, the shame, and I still carry a lot of that going home in grade two and trying to scrub off my skin, you know, and so that I could be happy to yeah. fit in. Yeah. And the shame and the embarrassment. I mean, brother, even as I sit here, the new, sit here with you, I know in my spirit, but there's still parts in my psyche that say I'm less than you, mm. you know, and I feel that because it's, it's obviously intergenerational trauma as well as my own personal experiences growing up as a, you know, I'm, I'm Scottish, Swedish, uh, as well as Aboriginal, but growing up with that lineage in my, mm. in my life. Mm. So showing up with these things, you know, it, it still brings up when I feel vulnerable, when I feel. But as Uncle Bob Randall, beautiful father figure to me, taken away at the age of eight from his mum, never saw her again, out from country out at Katajuda, Uluru, out that way. Um, made to walk with his aunties with chains on their necks, you know, 400 kilometres away, and then shipped all the way off Darwin and said, you know, it's all about love. And no matter what happens, just turn up, be real, share authentically, stand in that love, and know that you are never alone. Even when you feel like running away, sit there, sit there in that. Yeah, that man, he uh, experienced some of the worst of what humanity could could subject, mm. but he would, his heart was free like a bird. And uh, man, I'm so grateful for people like that that came into my world that allowed me to transition from either being dead or in jail, uh, like my older brother and cousins and other ones, and seeing that, yeah, seeing that we're all in servitude of expanding that and our lives are a beautiful polishing of creating that that most fertile soil for that to uh, deepen. Yeah. Aho to that. Aho, brother. <laughs> if you're enjoying the podcast, please leave a review and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest episodes.